Welcome back to the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva. We're here, of course, at the ITU headquarters, which is a buzzing, busy place, and there's a lot of networking going on behind me, as there has been over the last three days. And I'm really pleased to have the Director of Disarmament Affairs with me, Anja Kasperson, who was with me here last year. Thank you. Thank it's been you a busy year me. for you, I think. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, how does AI impact or have sit in with what you do? Well, as you were introducing me, I'm the, I work on disarmament affairs, and disarmament is a very wide area, so it entails disarmament, you know, the quantifiable issues of counting arms and limitations on arms. It's also arms control and non-proliferation and weapons regulation. And, you know, these are, I mean, disarmament is often said that it finds itself at the intersection between technology and national security. So as with everything else we've been hearing, you know, throughout the summit, you know, it impacts in every industry, in every discipline. It's a feature, it's an enabler, it helps us, it enhances processes. And the same thing goes for the entire field of international security and disarmament. So there are, of course, the the more negative sides of it. We worry about how this will be used in new weapons technologies, how it will be used to destabilize, how it would disrupt strategic balances. But this is an upside and it's important we talk about the sustainable development goals and disarmament very much fits within a lot of the disarmament, uh, sorry, a lot of the sustainable development goals. But we also focus a lot on strong institutions. And if you look across to the growth and innovation, sustainable development goals, like how do you make some of these advances in science and technology responsible? How do you create strong institutions around how we implement and apply these things? And when you think about this being used in a, in a security setting, these are very relevant examples. The upside that these technologies bring is also something we're only starting to explore and there's a lot of untapped potential how AI can be used given its qualities in assessing large amounts of data. Uh, to read patterns, you know, in different ways we've done before, using, we heard about this in the summit, you know, how we can use satellite navigation, we can use different ways of reading meteorology, uh, me meteorological data. So AI also be used in something that are very complicated things in disarmament, which is verification, detection, tracing, are, are very important areas. Uh, so we're looking at the positive applications, and we also investing quite a lot of time on thinking of risk mitigation uh, and the development of new weapons technologies. And as I said, we saw you here last year. Um, what's been achieved or what's changed in that year? You know, it's been, I think the biggest issue, I mean, a couple of takeaways on, on my side. And one of the biggest issues, which is very, you know, it's very, I, I see it's a very positive step forward, is that there's a much greater deal of um, maturity around the issues that we've been discussing. It's less hype-based, uh, there's more awareness. We moved in from you know, just a nice to know to actually starting to think, okay, how do we engage with these topics? How do we empower ourselves to engage this topic? And last year when I was here, I was, I was quite concerned that the, our, what I call is not the technology itself at this stage in AI that is racing ahead of us, it's our adoption of these technologies into every segment of our life. Now, without the maturity models in place, that adoption could go bad or it could go really good. And I'm very optimist after listening to people these last three days to see that there is a much greater willingness to discuss the risks that need to be tackled before we fully can optimize AR for good. And these are not uh, you know, philosophical risks. There's a lot of focus on ethics and it's been given a lot of prominence this year, but it's ethics from a practical perspective and it's ethics from a human perspective. So not just say, let's leave it to the state or the city or the industry to deal with the risks, but we as consumers need to empower ourselves and how do we adopt, adopt these technologies? What do we need to learn to understand their impact and set, you know, differentiate between the hype and where we are at this current state? And that doesn't mean, I'm not trying to suggest that we shouldn't prepare also for the future, but it's something about enabling people to engage today. Well, following on that, I mean, there's been a very collaborative approach at this AI summit. That must go in your direction that you're looking for, right? Absolutely. I mean, this, I mean, discussions, I mean, whether it's the disarmament field or is any kind of new topic, and especially a topic that receives so much attention as AI have done in, in recent years, you know, maintaining that collaborative approach is actually one of the biggest challenges because you know, there's a business side to it, there's a relevant side to it, you know, people come at this from different angles. So how do you maintain 
the silo busting effect, you know, how do you bring people together from different disciplines, not just as a nice one-off, but how do you make that, you know, work in the actual, from the design phase or from the conceptualization phase into the development and application and user side. And that's what I said, you know, that I'm, I'm very um, pleased to see that the summit this year is attracting every single angle of, if I can call it, the AI value chain of our adoption of it into our lives and that we can have that honest and mature discussion across that value chain because if we start at the back end of it when we are uncomfortable or unhappy with how it impacts on us it's going to be very difficult to turn around and go back to the conceptualization phase so we have to have that entire value chain fresh in our mind and these kind of summits and collaborative approaches is essential everyone's leaving here buoyed up you know but you have to keep the momentum going. What would be on your wish list over the next year? First of all, to continue, I mean, I said that there is a greater deal of maturity. I still think we're far away from where we need to be. Uh, we need to, as a community and also as individuals, and I think, you know, also our generation, you know, have to also work much more on bringing in the intergenerational aspects of this. The fact that how these debates and how you know issues around biases and values and applications are viewed differently depending on where you sit, where you are in regions, what life situation you're in. Last year I was here, I was speaking about vulnerable populations fleeing from war. You know, how AI is being used in those contexts are very different from you know me walking downtown Geneva. These are important aspects. What it looks like for our children and how their digital footprint is created almost in a vacuum of governance. How do we deal with those aspects in these kind of collaborative forums going forward? How do we open up that space, maintain that collaborative spirit? It's going to be a big challenge. And one of my big pet issues is, you know, the, sometimes when I speak on these issues, people ask me, you know, what do you do? And I don't talk about my, my official role as I'm a professional translator at heart. And we need more of those mm -hmm. and try to decomplicate the issue a little bit, allow, I said, empower to engage and engage to empower. And these are very important things because if people see this as something that is beyond themselves and they, you know, this is too complicated, this is very scientific, this is very, you know, I didn't, I was not good in maths in school, so how can I ever understand this? The technology is very basic, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very basic and we need to build that literacy to enable people to engage with it differently than we have done so far and I'm very hopeful that that will be where we go forward until next year. Okay, well, we'll discover that in a year's time when we come back here. Thank, Thank you very you. much. That's Anya Kasparsson, who's the Director of Disarmament Affairs here in Geneva. A big job, big responsibility. Thank you. Thank you so much.